Chiller Installation Method Statement Subscribe YouTube Channel Offering Alley Preliminary Check Before Chiller Installation Before commencement of chiller installation activity, the supervisor slash engineer must ensure that all installations and pressure testing of pipe slash duct works have been completed and approved by the consultant. Determine whether the units occur damages during the storage and shifting of location. Permission to start or civil clearances prior to installation has been given by the main contractor. All relevant approved shop drawings for the installation of the equipment shall be available and approved by the consultant. Installation activities shall only commence when all associated works by the civil has been completed. Safe access shall be provided by the main contractor through work permit in coordination with the safety in charge at site. Check the chiller foundation and ensure it is as per approved drawings. Check the area around the foundation and ensure access to the chiller from all sides as applicable. Place the anti-vibration mount of correct thickness as per approved drawing slash submit tolls. Ensure that sufficient space between chillers to prevent short cycling of air between the condenser fans of the two chillers. Ensure that electrical isolators are located close to the chiller for emergency stop slash maintenance. Comply with the civil defense or any other legal requirements. Ensure that flow switch is provided in the water circuits and interlocked with the chiller. Ensure that isolating valves are provided at the inlet and outlet of the chiller for maintenance. Ensure that a double regulating valve is provided at the chilled water circuit with a flow measuring port to facilitate proper balancing of the water flow. Safety requirements of installation of water chiller. The entire assembly of the water-cooled centrifugal chillers will be rigged from store to place of installation i.e. roof etc. Refer to manufacturer's instruction manual for rigging instructions for The chiller All site safety rules and regulations shall be complied. Supervisors will deliver toolbox talks, relevant to these activities to all operatives involved in the installation and shall be recorded. All operatives will be equipped with minimum personnel protective equipment, hard hat, coveralls, safety boots, safety glasses. The persons using cleaning fluid, solvent cement and any other forms of chemicals have to wear hand gloves. Ensure only qualified personnel shall install, test and commission the equipment. During installation, Display warning sign boards to be provided and barricade the area whenever necessary. Close monitoring by the site engineers during installation is much highly recommended. Only competent, experienced and trained personnel shall perform all the required activities stated in this method statement. Ensure that all operatives fully understand the method of these activities. Sequence of installation for water chiller Prior to moving the chillers at site, ensure that the foundation requirements have been done. Foundation details and requirements for the chillers shall be as per approved shop drawings or as recommended by the manufacturer as follows. Rigid non-warping mounting pads or a concrete foundation is available prior to shifting chillers at site. Ensure that the foundation will be able to support the chiller at its full operating weight. For proper unit operation, the chiller must be level within 1.6 mm over its length and width when set into place on the mounting surface. After ensuring that the foundations for the chillers are satisfactory, shift the chillers by means of cranes to its exact location. Ensure that the lifting cables are capable of supporting the entire weight of the chiller. Failure to properly lift the unit could result to serious injuries and damage of the unit. Ensure isolator pads or spring isolators are available in the chiller feet slash legs prior to lowering the unit to its foundation. Mechanical connections to chiller. 
ensure that all piping connected to the chiller must be properly isolated and supported so that it does not place any stress on the unit. It is much recommended to avoid piping from 3 feet minimum to the equipment to allow proper fit up upon arrival of the unit at job site. Pipe the evaporator into the chilled water circuit. Pipe the condenser into the cooling tower water circuit. Locate pressure gauge taps in a straight length of pipe. Place tap a minimum of one pipe diameter downstream of any elbow, orifice, etc. Install air vents and drain valves on the water boxes. Each water box is provided with 3 fourths NPTF vent and drain connection. Plastic plugs are factory installed in both openings. Remove and discard the same before installing the water box vents and drain valves. Install pressure relief valves in the condenser and evaporator water circuits to avoid water box damage due to hydrostatic expansion. Whenever are applicable, install pressure relief valves at the drain connections on the evaporator and condenser water boxes. Install a strainer in the entering side of each piping circuit to avoid possible tube plugging in the chiller with debris. Install flow sensing device. Use either flow switches or differential pressure switches in conjunction with the pump interlocks to verify evaporator and condenser water flows. Install bypass valve system to avoid circulating water through the auxiliary shell when the unit is shut down. Pipe the evaporator and condenser as per the approved shop drawings. Ensure that the correct pipe sizes are to be connected to the evaporator and condenser circuit. Ensure that the evaporator water piping is clear, check if the chilled water pump is operated but before initial chiller start up. If any partial blockages exists remove the same to prevent for possible tube damage resulting from evaporator freeze up or erosion. For condenser and large evaporator connections, arrange the water piping so that the water supply enters the shell at the lower connection, and exists from the top connection. Units shall use grooved pipe connections and flanged connections for 300 psi water boxes, use welded flanges. Piping joint using grooved type couplings, like all types of piping systems, require proper support system to carry out the weight of the pipes and equipment. Ensure that system refrigerant differential pressure must be maintained above 21 kPa at all times. Failure to do so could result in operating problems. Ensure that the discharge piping that allows pressure relief devices to safely vent refrigerant to the atmosphere if overpressure occurs. Make sure that the minimum pipe size for the vent must be equals the size of the discharge connections on the pressure relief device. When connecting the vent line to the chiller do not apply threading torque to the outside pipe. If the unit is not factory insulated, install insulation around the evaporator bulb wells and ensure that the bulb wells and connections for the water box drains and vents are still accessible after insulation is applied. Ensure that the sensor modules and interconnecting four wire cables must be raised up above the field installed insulation. Do not insulate over the wiring or sensor device. Insulation shall be as per approved material submittal. Install the controller hardware slash equipment which are used to interface with the internal chiller data and functions provided by the controls. Note that there are four connections on the controller that support the communication interface. Install the control panel and ensure low voltage and high voltage areas are in proper route and field wiring. Installation method of display. The display is boxed and shrink wrapped behind the control panel during the shipment. Follow the procedure for installation of display as follows. Unwrap control panel and display arm. Plug the power cable and the ethernet cable into the bottom of the display. Adjust the display support arm so the base plate that attaches to the display is horizontal. Position the display with the LCD screen facing up, 
on top of the display support arm base plate. Align the four holes in the display support arm base plate. Attach the display to the display support arm base plate. Electrical wiring procedure. Ensure that all wires and cables are of the correct sizes as voltage slash ampere requirements of the units. Check the isolator selection slash capacity for the chillers. Check the cable sizing which should be adequate to take the loads. Check the control wiring scheme for proper interlocking. Cable tray slash routing to be checked and coordinated with other services. Details of control scheme, controls, to be given to the control panel supplier and ensure proper arrangement are provided to suit requirement. Ensure all electrical requirements have been wired and connected as follows. Power supply wiring to the starter. Starter to motor wiring. Starter to control panel wiring. System control circuit wiring. Water pump interlock circuits and flow switches and other devices. Temperature sensor circuits. Other unit control options present. Any field supplied control devices. System evacuation, dehydration, and charging with refrigerant shall be carried out by skilled and experienced personnel only. After installation of the chillers, raise inspection to the consultant for acceptance prior to proceeding with testing and commissioning.